um, we, we don't see substantial vulnerabilities. Uh, so the probability of contagion uh, is very small today. Uh, the banks are, are, are well capitalized. Uh, the liquidity ratios are very high. Um, I think uh, the rate hikes are most now a story of the past. I think we are close to the end of the tightening cycle. So I, to be honest, I do not believe that there's going to be a problem in the Greek banking, in the, in, in the Greek or in the um, uh, European banking system. I, and, and yet, sir, sorry, I, I'm going to go back to the days when I was standing in Syntagma Square at the height of the crisis, not only there, by the way, everywhere else as well. Uh, and the problem is we carry more debt on the sovereign than we carried at the peak of the great financial crisis, sir. We have greater links between the financial institutions, the independent banks and the sovereign. The doom loop that we talked about so much all those years ago, sir, is alive and well. Isn't the problem when we come right back down to the grassroots, there is too much sovereign debt, there is too much debt of that held by banks who have a, a very, very close relationship with the sovereign. And as such, we've left ourselves vulnerable once again to future crises, sir. Um, yes, there is uh, sovereign debt, uh, but uh, banks are uh, much stronger today. Uh, they, they have uh, uh, three times more capital than they used to have. Uh, they, they have better liquidity ratios. And uh, also, the supervisors are much, much wiser today. Uh, stress tests have shown no problems with European banks. So, well, the probability of, uh, of a problem is a very small one. There was a very interesting comment from one of our guests earlier on talking about the need, the urgent, perhaps the desperate need for Europe to finally realise we have too many banks, too many small banks uh, and not enough um, but larger institutions which are able to weather the storm. Do you think events of the last few weeks and currently, of course, will act as a catalyst for more bank integration? Would you like to see less banks but better banks? Uh, well, we do not prohibit uh, merger of banks in Europe. Uh, we we welcome if uh, if there is a, a commercial opportunity. Uh, uh, and don't forget that in Europe, um, uh, small banks and large banks they they face more or less the same supervisory parameters. So there isn't much much difference between the big and small banks. Let me ask you a, a slightly different question. As, as part of this um, bailout arrangement, we're ultimately gonna, going to see the cocoa bond holders, the additional tier one capital holders wiped out completely, while some of the equity investors will get some of their money back at this stage. Given that these particular instruments were created from the 08 financial crisis to act as uh, a form of liquidity support for the banks, what do you think this means in terms of a dangerous precedent to show that any owners of this part of any bank's capital structure are more vulnerable than the equity holders? Does this mean that we will see increased reluctance to own this part of the credit structure in banks? Um, I think uh, what happened uh, was a commercial deal in Switzerland. It was not a resolution. Um, uh, and uh, so there must be a reason why the Swiss authorities uh, reversed the order of the, of the distribution of losses. Uh, in my view, and uh, uh, well, it's uh, just an outsider's view, um, is that uh, it was the, 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 greater, the greater good, the, the common good that prevailed here. And uh, they had to strike a deal, which they did successfully, and uh, we have welcomed that.